All right, we're to part three in chapter nine. Uh, part two was all about independent samples and comparing them. Part three is all about if the samples are dependent. Um, this is again comparing two, uh, two different sets of data. And um, this is gonna be a little bit different though, um, because when they're independent, we can compare them directly with one another. Uh, we're gonna have to do some kind of fancy stuff here. Um, so we, we're gonna have two uh, dependent samples. We're gonna test a claim about the mean of the population of all such differences. And the key to this one is differences. Difference in our world means subtract. We'll get to that. Requirements, the sample data are uh, dependent. The sample, meaning they're related to one another because they're connected somehow. One affects the other. The samples are simple random samples and the number of pairs of sample data is n is bigger than 30 or uh, the pairs of values have differences that are from uh, a population that's normally distributed. Our test statistic is here. This is t equals, this is d bar minus mu sub d over s sub d divided by the square root of n with degrees of freedom of n minus one. I will make sense of all these symbols. In fact, let's go ahead and start. The individual difference between the two values in a single matched pair, we call that d. So each one has its own d, d sub one, d sub two, d sub three, and so on. Next up, we have the mean value for the differences for the population, population, which means we're using Greek, mu sub d. So that's the population difference mean. D bar, bar, which is in this formula right here, D bar, is the mean value for the differences for the paired sample data, sample. And S sub D, it's a standard deviation of the differences for the paired sample data. We can also have a um, confidence interval of the differences. And so we would be um, surrounding the mu sub d. And here's how we figure out e. Um, I'm being a little loose on this because um, our calculators do do most of this math for us. Let's do this. Now, you're going to need to take a minute and put that. I put this into list one and this into list two. And um, we're going to use the sample data to test the claim that the population of heights of presidents and their main opponents, the differences have a mean greater than zero centimeters. Um, so for example, uh, comparing uh, currently Joe Biden's height to that of Donald Trump's, or in the previous election, it would have been uh, comparing Donald Trump's height to, um, to Hillary Clinton. And so height of the president and height of the main president, what I wanna do, and of course I've already put mine in to list one and two, and these are pairings. And we wanna know if there's, um, if, if there's a significance with this, and let's draw out, first of all, let's do our null hypothesis. Mu sub d is zero, meaning there is no significant difference between their heights. Versus mu sub one is that there is, mu sub d is bigger than zero. And to be clear, this is the claim. And we have that n in this case. Now it's the number of pairs. So one, two, three, four, five. So n equals five. The degrees of freedom is going to be four. And let's set up our drawing here. And this is going a uh, larger than, so it's going to be a right tail. The significance level that is chosen is 0 0.05. And let's get, uh, this is a T curve, by the way, T. So let's do inverse T with the degrees of freedom, four. So distributions, inverse T. Area to the left is going to be one minus in this case, one minus 0 0.05. Degrees of freedom is only four. 
see what we get for our critical value, 2.13. All right, let's do our test statistic for part A. And, and before we do that, what I'm gonna to need to do is do 189 minus 170, 173 minus 185 and so on. And I'm gonna show you a super cool fancy trick. Push that up a little bit. All right, so this is stat edit. So here I have the list of the heights of the presidents and here are the list of the, uh, the height of the main opponent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to list three and go to L3. And I'm going to go L1 minus L2. So this one minus this one, and it's going to spit out all these values for me. So watch, L1 minus L2. And I always have to give credit to my wife for teaching this to me. I didn't know this little trick. And hit enter, and there they are. Look at that. Gives us all these differences for us. And remember, they're in list three now. So this is 19, negative 12, 8, 0, and 1. And again, this isn't list 3 for me. All right, so we are just going to run a regular standard t-test. On list 3. So stat, test, t-test. And we have data. And that's going to be zero in this case, zero. My data is in list three. So once again, remember list three is above the three. So second three, and it changes it to L3 for me. And this one is a larger than. And then calculate. So there is our test statistic and our p value. This gives me that T. Yeah. T is about 0 0.628. And the P value is 0 0.28. Um, which is way bigger than 0 0.05. Which means, so my T value, I'm gonna put about there. We can see the P value is significantly larger than the alpha. So we're gonna to fail to reject. And I'll write the fail to reject in the statement um, after. This is part A, part B. I'm now going to run a, um, a regular um, t interval based on the data in list three. So stat t interval right there, number eight on mine. And we're running the data on list three, very nice. Now, I want to point out again, this is a one tail, so that gets a little tricky. I had 0 0.05 over here. That means I need 0 0.05 over here. It has to be a two tail. This means that my sea level is 0 0.90, 0 0.9. So data is still in list three. That's going to be 0.9. So we had to double what looks like the critical region. Calculate that out. There is our interval. So this is negative 7.658. And the key here is zero is between a negative and a positive. So negative. This means that zero is in there. So both tests are telling us 
fail to reject. The null hypothesis. So I'm running out of room here. There is not sufficient to support the claim that mean difference is zero is uh, less than, uh, it, greater than, pardon me, is greater than zero. And that's dependent 